In the Saal forests of western Nepal is the Bardia Reserve. It was here in 1992 that a team from the Scientific Exploration Society discovered the largest elephant ever seen in the Indian subcontinent. Standing 11 foot 3 at the shoulder, the giant was thought by local people to be a mammoth, but he turned out to be an unusual Asian elephant with a pronounced domed head. Numerous expeditions to study this creature and his herd were made up to 2001. The discovery of Raja Garj, or King Elephant as he became known, led to the Nepalese Wildlife Department to protect the area and this also preserved the endangered Indian rhino, the Bengal tiger, other animals and birds that were living in the area. Five years ago, Raja Garj disappeared. But in 2010, hearing he had returned, a new team went in to seek him. However, they learned that he had possibly been swept away in a flood. Happily, the expedition found two large tuskers, also rhino, tiger and numerous other animals in this little visited area. They also found footprints of a herd of wild elephants leading into this magnificent wilderness flanked by two rivers and to the north the Himalayan foothills rising sharply from the forests. To the south there lay the vast plains of India. Although local villagers told of these five-ton giants emerging from the forests at night to ravage crops, the expedition could not find them. To protect their homes and fields, the people were known to try to kill the elephants with poison fruit as a bait or to shoot them with old muzzle-loading muskets. Cooperating with the Nepalese Wildlife Department and our friends at Tiger Tops, which is a Nepalese company that promotes wildlife conservation, a new project was set up in 2012 to determine the size and location of the herds and try to help the local people who had suffered from their presence. For years, my three grandchildren had begged me to take them to see the animals that I described in letters. We decided to take a team of youngsters to Nepal and use them to scout the forest and discover where the wandering herd was living. At the same time, they could meet the village children and help to convince them that in spite of the damage done by the wild animals, it was better to protect them. Our transport would be domestic elephants, land rovers, boats and also marching through the jungle. When the movement of the herd had been plotted, a more senior expedition would come in to do a scientific study of the elephants and set up a community aid program. And this film is the story of the senior expedition. Before the expedition, the team were briefed at the expedition base in Motcom, Dorset and learned to handle equipment, including the radios and the night vision equipment. In April, we arrived in Kathmandu and had a final briefing and also enjoyed a dinner at the home of Christian Edwards, chairman of our agents, Tiger Tops. Flying from Kathmandu to Nepalganj, we passed along the southern side of the Annapurna range. At the Karnali Lodge in Bardia, we were introduced to our elephants by the famous guide Ram Din and shown how to make elephant sandwiches. These consist of grass and balls of molasses with herbs. Each jumbo has 80 of these a day. After our briefing on the elephants, we then moved to our base camp. This was specially constructed for us beside the Karnali River. This is uh, John Blushford Snell's tent, uh, on suite facilities. <coughs> 
And that's one of the expedition group tents. And here are the uh, facilities. Toilets and showers. Jack just going in. And the toilet is literally a hole in the ground, a thunderbox. This is a five star showering facility. Next morning we learned how to mount our elephants and set off on our first search for the wild cousins. Each elephant carries three to four of us and the driver or thanet and the guide or tracker. The guides signal to each other by whistles and also using our walkie-talkie radios. In the western part of the park, we soon encountered the wild elephant. Here's a fine bull. And soon the herd of cows and calves appeared to drink at the river. The adult females are very defensive of their young and keep us well away. The yapping cries are actually made by the elephant. It sounds rather like a small dog. The tuskers are never far away and follow the herd. This poor chap has broken off one of his tusks. At dawn and dusk, the wild elephant will come to bathe and drink. Sometimes we give our domestic elephants a rest and when the ground is passable we use land rovers. In the east of the park is the valley of the Babai River and this is another haunt for wildlife. Here we had a separate camp for two days and saw more wild elephants but our doctor had to climb a tree to spot them. After bathing, the elephants often dust themselves to keep cool. Come on, get moving, you've had your drink. And that's it, that's when you see the...
Come on, get a move on. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> in the east of the Bardi Reserve is the Babai River. And as this was the end of the dry season, uh, water was short in the jungle. So a lot of the animals come down here to drink. And we moved into a temporary camp here for a few days to get a view, particularly of the elephants that were coming down to this river. To measure the heights of the wild elephant, we multiply the circumference of the forefoot print by two and all the diameter by six. It gives an approximate height to the shoulder. And when you're measuring the wild elephants, um, obviously there are other ways of doing it with lasers, and we have an. Uh, uh, Tessa did it last time and we've got the laser devices I'll be talking about those later for measuring but that is a quick way of working out the height of the, of the elephants DNA is obtained from the dung and specimens were preserved in ethanol for analysis by Tessa and Sarah these still photos will be studied by the wildlife department and also by Professor Adrian Lister at Britain's Natural History Museum My name is Barry West. And what is your job on the expedition? Uh, communications, because I'm a retired pilot, so I'm used to talking to people. So that's my primary job. You'll do well on this interview then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you just tell me why you uh, came on to the expedition in the first place? Well, I first heard about it because I've known John Blashford Snell for some 35 years or so, as we used to work together very remotely working together and I was having lunch with him about the middle of last year and he mentioned it and I thought that's exactly the sort of thing that I'd like to do. My horror in life is lying on a beach doing absolutely nothing and this struck me as being totally different from that so that's what tempted me to do it in the first place and my wife and myself have always gone off on adventurous sort of interesting holidays. Fantastic. Um, what, what do you think of it so far then? Absolutely brilliant. Um, seen more elephants than you can shake a stick at. Enjoyed washing my own particular elephant, who I call it mine because it's the one I've ridden on all the time. Uh, desperately want to see a tiger. That's the only sort of minor disappointment, but actually the whole thing has been beautifully organised and absolutely great fun to be had. To win the sympathy of the local people for the wildlife, we always try to help schools and communities. Over the years, we have supported the Sri Janaki Secondary School in the Gula area. This year, we took them their first computer and educational books, as well as giving medical and dental aid. Tiger Top's Avon Inflatables took us downriver to the village where buffalo carts met us. 
We had an accident earlier when one of the buffaloes bolted and the cart almost overturned. I prefer to ride the elephants. We had visited the school with our family expedition two weeks before and the children were pleased to see us again. Hello. We'd bought footballs, which were soon put to good use. And the balloons were always popular. Boys and girls, it is wonderful to see you again. We are very pleased that the computer is working and being of real use to you. When the internet reaches your village, you will be able to look at the websites of our organization. We have also brought with us today three dentists and a doctor. And we will do our best to help you in the future, but please do what you can to help the body apart and to protect the animals. Kathy Renfrew provided some skipping ropes which were especially appreciated. We checked out the new computer. <laughs> then it was time for the traditional game of elephant football. <laughs> the idea is to get the children to like the elephants and dissuade the people from poisoning or shooting at the wild ones that sometimes ravage their crops. <laughs> Pick that up on automatically on sound. So the youngsters mounted up and the game starts. The elephants don't like kicking the ball, so it soon became elephant Yay. rugby. <laughs> Unfortunately, the village's protective electric fence has broken down and the wild elephant damaged 
four houses seeking grain. <laughs> so we undertake to provide new batteries for it. And these were delivered after we had left the area. Some of our work was done from Land Rovers and the map of the park was updated by our surveyor Duncan from one of these vehicles. Lala Mati waterhole. And this is a Bal Mati artificial waterhole. On a visit to the Baba area, one of our vehicles broke down, and so there had to be some cross-loading of the stores. Gary Ramro, China. Both the fish eating Garyao crocodile with its long snout and the shorter but more dangerous mugger are found in the park. Monkeys are very common, and there are masses of the long-tailed langurs who sound the alarm whenever a tiger is around. There are also the small rhesus monkey scampering around the trees. Easy. Bird life is prolific in Bardia, including ruddy shell ducks, herons, crested serpent eagle, egrets, jungle fowl, parakeets, eagle owls, kingfishers, rollers, bulbuls. and my favorite, the peacock. The presence of so many samba, swamp, and spotted and other deer in the park ensures there are plenty of tigers too. Bardia is a good place to see the Indian one-horned rhino and we had some exciting close encounters with these great prehistoric looking beasts.
The wild boar were also plentiful. Give me your name, please. Uh, Mandy West. And what has uh, your job been on the expedition? Um, DNA and sort of dog's body, dental dog's body. So a pooper scooper. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, could you just say why you came on the expedition in the first place? Um, because my husband knows John and we both love nature, uh, elephants and I was dying to see a tiger. And uh, have you managed to achieve that yet? No, not yet. It's still waiting for me in the jungle. Excellent. So what has been the highlights uh, then of the uh, trip so far? I think seeing all the animals just roving round. Uh, missed some of the big elephants, but I loved the elephant washing today. Um, and the uh, the most exciting part of the uh, expedition for you? Oh, when we nearly got chased by a bull elephant yesterday. That oh, seems to be a recurring it, theme. It changed its mind, but it was quite exciting for a millisecond. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Mandy. One unusual antelope was very tame. This was Bambi, a nilgai or blue bull that had been adopted by the Nepalese soldiers who guard the park. He is completely tame and goes out on anti-poaching patrols with the soldiers. Jack Evans, our ornithologist, set up some insect traps at night. We're just going to try to get some nice big moth. We tried it last night and it was remarkably unsuccessful, um, probably because of the really strong winds. But we've set this up for an hour or so and we've got a bit of life on it, lots of small things. Although the mosquitoes were not too bad in Bardia, there were plenty of other insects to look at, including the grasshoppers and scorpions seen here. We saw very few snakes, but there were some massive rock pythons. Uh, my name is David Dunseywood. And what is your job on the expedition? I am uh, well, I'm an artist, a wildlife artist, but my job on this expedition is I've been collecting DNA and uh, hopefully doing some sketching. Excellent. Uh, um, what was the reasons for you coming on the expedition then? Uh, well, I heard uh, Colonel Rashford Snell a long time ago and I thought he's... Uh, an eccentric sort of British feel that likes to go on these wonderful expeditions. I thought if I could go on one of those, what a fantastic experience that would be. And joining up with this other band of eccentric Britons, I think, is uh, and from all over the world actually, it's turned out to be a fantastic trip. And what have been the highlights so far of the trip? Highlights, um, let me think. Well, apart from the obvious of being charged by the elephant, which uh, was a thrill in itself, uh, seeing tigers in the wild was absolutely superb. Um, I couldn't have hoped for that in my wildest dreams, to be honest with you. So, uh, definitely, I think the tiger was a close uh, second from the charge from the bull. Excellent. David, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Madani is a Nepali name. Espetologus pravi Ramdin was a real expert on the flora and traditional medicine. There were also some spectacular strangler vines. Uh, my name is Graham Lydiot. 
And what's your job uh, on the expedition? Uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Um, I've been helping out as quartermaster and I've also been responsible for some photography and some of the navigation aspects of the trip. Excellent. And uh, what were your personal reasons for coming on the expedition? I had the good pleasure to go with the SES to Bolivia in 2001 and had a really, really good time. Always wanted to do another expedition and a chance to come to a place like Nepal where I'd never been and in all fairness probably would never visit unless uh, I had a really good reason for doing so. Um, it kind of ticked all the boxes for me. And uh, well, what, what, what do you think of it so far then? It's been fantastic. Um, I mean I did unfortunately come down with a, a small bout of illness for a couple of days which uh, floored me at the start of the trip but since then it's really been great fun. Um, we've had a lot of great experiences, seen some amazing animals the scenery is fantastic, the guides and staff at the camp are just absolutely brilliant um, and they fed us very well as well, which is always a bonus. Uh, and what's been your personal highlight? Personal highlight so far, I think, was probably coming across the elephant herd for the first time. Um, we were very fortunate to kind of catch them at a time when we could get them as they crossed the river. And it was just, it's everything you kind of hope for out of a trip like this. You know you're going to see some animals, you hope you're going to see some of the really exciting ones. But to see 23 elephants in one crossing, yeah, it's going to take some beating. To and so some far. of us were fortunate to see the magnificent great cat, the Royal Bengal Tiger. There are believed to be 20 in Bardia and breeding pretty well. Dr. Carolina Hanley from Bolivia joins Sarah and Angus for work at the Sri Janaki School, which was much appreciated. Throughout the expedition, our doctor and the dentist treated local people to win their support for the protection of the wildlife. We gave special attention to Telpani, a hill village known to be the home to some of the poachers. Dentists Angus Gordon and Captain Sarah Armstrong of the Royal Army Dental Corps did great work here. One of the greatest joys was to help wash the elephants at the end of the day. It's quite an experience to romp around with a four-ton lady in her bath.
We spent our last night at Bardia in the splendid Carnale Lodge, and here we presented the warden of the park with a brand new Honda Unicorn motorcycle for his anti-poaching unit. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure tonight to have with us uh, the warden and Robin, uh, who are largely responsible for the welfare of the animals that we have enjoyed uh, seeing in Bardia. <laughs> and as you know, we are all doing our best to support the work of the Wildlife Department in Bardia. And we've done it in various ways, with dentists and health, and uh, taking out teeth. There are now lots of toothless people around. <laughs> so we're grateful to Angus uh, and Sarah and Carolina. Uh, but, and also to John Elderton, who has done great work today uh, with the local people. Uh, when Two years ago, when we came, so this will contribute to keeping down the poaching, yeah. which, is, which at the moment is being kept down. And I can say, sir, that I've been here for 14 times, I think. I have never seen uh, so many elephants uh, as we have now. That you have more than a third of all the elephants in Nepal in Bardia. And longer may it continue. Conservation is not the easy job. Just you have to live in the forest and our just uh, permitted in park staff are so for your kind support and this is our great pleasure. Thank you. the time when you head off into the jungle next time. <laughs> <laughs> Second person, of course, I'm sure you'll all agree, who has been with me many, many times. And we've learned to shout at each other on the back of elephants. Uh, but he's done a remarkable Randy job boy. in guiding us to all these animals that otherwise you would never see. And that is Ramdin. Uh, Ramdin, we are very grateful for all your guidance and help. And you can use this for cutting your fingernails. <laughs> I'm a Taru. My family have been living in this, uh, I would say, lowland in Chitwan since uh, six generations. As always, we held a traditional Burns Night Supper with a delicious roast pig and lots of Staley's haggis. <laughs> <laughs> Fair fire, your honest Sonti face. Great chieftain o'er oh, the pudding race. I boon them, I attack your place. Paints try for them. Will ye are you worthy of a grace? As lang says my arm. The groaning trencher. There ye fell. <laughs> your heart goes like a distant hill. Your pin will help to mend the mill. Okay, can you give me your uh, name please? Yeah, John Etherton. And your job on the expedition? I'm the expedition medic. Very appropriate, the glass of wine in hand. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you what you came on the expedition for, but uh, um, being well, the doctor, it's going to be a bit more than that. Well, I, I wasn't initially going to be the expedition medic. I was uh, invited by my um, brother-in-law, Peter Fraser, who's an expert fisherman, to join him on uh, the giant ex uh, elephant expedition because he has been a member of the Scientific Exploration Society for several decades but never been on a trip and he thought it'd be rather fun for two old codgers to go together. So we uh, <laughs> have come on together. I was interviewed by John Blashford Snell, Colonel Blashford Snell, and he discovered I was a medic so he said we haven't got 
an expedition medic, and uh, he appointed me there and then at the interview. You need to realise that John interviews everybody to make sure that they're suitable for the expedition because it can be quite dangerous and you have to have an interest in you know, something to do with the expedition otherwise it's not really appropriate to go on it. Excellent. And uh, what have you thought of it so far then? Absolutely fantastic. We are in the middle of a real jungle in a, in a true third world country. <coughs> and uh, my interest obviously is partly um, the local medicine, I'm looking at uh, traditional medicine in western Nepal. I'm also looking after the people on the trip and we are absolutely hundreds of miles from any medical care at all. So um, I've brought my complete kit for anything up to the necessity for helicopter evacuation which we'd have to do I suppose if um, we had a real crisis or an injury, severe injury by uh, one of the local wildlife. Um, I'm also a chartered biologist which I was in a previous life and I maintained an interest so um, member of the Society of Biology and uh, the wildlife here is absolutely incredible. We've got um, a lot of quite dangerous species here um, and the, the camp which is the base for the expedition is in a completely natural setting and doesn't interfere with the environment at all so it's not fenced and it's completely open. There was a tiger apparently roaming around the perimeter of the camp last night and they found evidence of that and uh, the wild elephants which we have now found in substantial numbers are absolutely fascinating because they, they do operate in herds and um, although we've been photographing them and had come across two quite substantial herds and they are very dangerous. Um, a man was killed by an elephant a couple of nights ago who, who went and raided the village looking for salt and crops and uh, on uh, about two or three nights previously to that uh, four, uh, four houses in the village of Gola were actually destroyed by elephants looking for uh, the same thing, salt and crops. So, you know, look at the wildlife. Of course, I could have gone forever about the other wildlife, but that would be other people, I'm sure. So what was your best part of the uh, uh, expedition? And the so best far? part was that I accompanied the dentists to a day dental clinic in the village of Gola, which is a truly deprived third world village, and uh, set up a little medical clinic to attend to any of the kids who wanted to um, have medical treatment. Of course, as it anticipated, the whole village discovered that I was going to be there. And so all the adults came as well if I had any need. Um, we worked solidly from about 11 a.m. till 3.30 p.m. I saw 50 people exactly with a variety, whole variety of needs and did what I could and got rid of most of the medication that I brought with me on the expedition. The main thing as a matter of interest in Nepal is ear problems. Most mm, interesting, mm. for some reason they get waxy ears, uh, even from childhood, quite early, uh, impacted, hard, and then you get an infection behind the ear. The uh, infection then bursts the eardrum, and if it isn't treated, of course, and they end up with a perforation in the eardrum, so they're deaf, or partially deaf, actually. And this can persist, obviously, for, uh, for many decades. Most interesting and uh, very difficult. In fact, ear camps do operate quite a bit of cataract uh, in quite young people as well and although they seem very fit and so on because of their diet and their lifestyle they do get arthritis again especially in the women and mm. um, from the age of 40 I've seen people uh, yesterday at the little clinic I ran with uh, quite bad arthritis of the knees and, and the hips. So John you thank you very much indeed thanks for your time. Okay. Hello. So we said farewell to our friends, human and animal at Bardia, and pray this remarkable park will prosper in the future. That was Captain Sir Armstrong, dentist. Thank thank you very much. Well done, well done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, girls, well done. Elephants are all girls. After the jungle, there was time for a quick visit to the sites of Kathmandu, including the public cremations, the temples, old cities and the markets.
Finally, we relaxed at the splendid Shankar Hotel. 